Welcome to BergKnifeMaking.com. Today we're going to take a look at part two of the Skull Knife collaboration build with the third dimension laser metal etching. Now this is the finished product. It is a skull and roses themed blade, full blade etching by the third dimension, and it's got segmented scales made from African ebony segmented with paper micarta uh, skull scales from Mad Max. So this part one of this project started out, I, I provided the blank. This is an AEBL stainless steel blank, 3 16 thick. I did the bevels on it, I did the heat treating, etc. And then I basically just sent it off to uh, Chance over at the Third Dimension Metal Etching. Uh, he actually laid out the artwork um, and provided all of uh, the etching on this project. It was a really cool process. He's got a, a, a few metal etching machines or laser machines. He was able to turn this around in a few days. It's a very deep etch. It was fascinating to watch. Um, but basically, I ran out of time on the first video, and I had to break this up into two. So on part two, we're going to pick, pick up where part one left off. So the, the blade has been etched and returned to me. And we're going to start finishing that uh, blade, adding uh, or working on the segmented scales. So as this blade was being etched, um, Chance uh, Lawson from over at the Third Dimension sent me some photos um, of the design that he had come up with. And, and I wanted to come up with equally as good handles. So I called my, my friend Joe uh, over at Mad Max Custom Knife Handles, and he sent me some paper micarta. These are um, paper micarta scales that have a skull uh, inside or on each layer of the, of the micarta. So as you uh, grind through that, you will continue to see the skull throughout the piece. Here, here's the scales that he sent. Now, when I compared these to how busy the blade etching was, I just thought that using these as is would have been a little bit too busy, you know, too many skulls <laughs> for my liking. So I decided to make segmented scales. Um, I had some African ebony laying around in the shop, so I got a couple pieces of that. I figured I would cut out a section and put in just this one skull. So it would be one ghostly skull um, appearing out of the paper micarta. That's, that's what the plan was. So I'm not going to go into detail on this. I, I cut all of the pieces basically to size, and I went over to a disc grinder and I made sure that they were perfectly uh, perfectly level and flat and, and true cuts, and I glued everything together with epoxy. And then I'm just uh, trimming them off. Now what I've done is I've, I've also added black and white uh, liners and spacers. So there's black and white spacers in between the paper micarta and the ebony, and then I'm also going to glue these uh, to liners. So there'll be black and white liners behind those scales. Once all of that done is done, uh, then I've clamped these. And I'm making sure that the, the lines from the spacers line up perfectly before, you know, when I clamp these. Because they have to be perfect on the finished piece. You always want to finish the front edge of the handles. Um, I do these right on the 2x72, and I'm just profiling them here. I'm just bringing them into the shape that I want. And I'll run through a couple of different belts on this. I'll, I'll do the rough grinding on a coarse grit, and then I bring it down to, uh, you know, 120 and 240 and sometimes a 400, depending on the material. And then I'll actually go over onto the uh, buffing wheel and, and buff those. Because you can't get to that once uh, the, the scales are glued onto the, onto the blank. I'm also going to, because these scales are a little on the thin side, I'm actually going to bevel uh, the front edge of the scales before I put them on the knife. Now, a lot of times you'll see me beveling them afterwards, uh, but I just didn't want to take a chance of, of ruining this blade. You know, if you touch the blade to the grinder at all, you're, it's shot. So it's, it's safer uh, to do those bevels uh, prior to gluing uh, the handles onto the blank. So this is just a two-part epoxy. I use a 24-hour um, epoxy. And the way I put handles on, I do one side at a time. I get it you know, perfectly lined up exactly where I want it. Um, I clamp it uh, into position. 
I clean off uh, any of the epoxy that is oozed out onto the blade just with alcohol wipes or paper towel uh, with a little alcohol on it. And then I set that aside to dry. Once that's dried, then I'll take the clamps off and I'll go over and I'll use the holes through the blank as a drill guide. Now I've got this on a drill press. I've got to stop so it can't, the blank can't spin on me. And I've also got a board underneath it, which is really going to prevent uh, any blowout on the back side of the uh, African ebony. I want to have a nice, end up with a nice clean hole for the pins. So once side one is, is, is glued and dried and, and uh, drilled, I'm going to glue up side two. And in this case, I'm going to just perfectly align it. And with segmented scales, you really have to be careful. Uh, notice that I did not profile side one first. I'm putting it on full size uh, because I know that that top edge uh, will be even with the bottom. I'm oh, sorry, the, the top edge of, of side two will be even with the top edge of side one. So I can use that kind of as a guide. You want to make sure that the edges on both um, the top and bottom match out perfectly and that's those edges and also all of the lines from the spacers line up perfectly. You know, these black and white spacers, especially the white, they really stand out. So if you're off by even a little bit, the end result is not going to look good. So now that side two uh, is glued and dried, I will then drill through the holes in side one using that as my drill guide. So the end result here is it, it probably takes me a little longer uh, to glue up scales. Uh, but I'm running my drill bit, and this is a one size over. This is a size F quarter inch holes, so that my, uh, my quarter inch pins will go in nice and easy. But my drill bit is going through all three pieces, and it's, it's you know, perfectly squared. I find by doing it this way, I just end up ruining less, you know, less handles over the course of time. I'm going to cut off the majority of the excess material just on a bandsaw. And then I'm going to go back to the 2x72. I've got a 90 degree table on it with a very coarse grit belt and I'm just going to continue uh, to profile the, the handles. So I'll bring those in and you can actually hear it when it touches the steel. I'll bring it in until the steel, is, uh, the steel of the blank is completely exposed. For the inside curves, what I'll do is I'll take that belt and overhang it on the right side of the flat platen, and it, that allows me to do the curves pretty easily. Afterwards, I'm going to finish this up like I do any knife. Um, I'll go vertical and I'll um, go with a finer, finer grit belt. So if I if I rough ground the profiles at you know a 36 grit, I'm probably at an 80 grit here, and then I'll go to 120 and I'll go to 240. I usually, um, you, you know, for hardwood, when I start to actually shape the handles, I'll go back to an 80 because this stuff is pretty hard. A small wheel attachment uh, for the 2x72 really makes a world of difference. It, it just, it, it helps you get into these inside curves um, and finish off the inside of your knife very nicely. So this is what I was talking about, shaping, shaping the handles. Um, I actually do the majority of it right on the 2x72. You have to be careful. You have to uh, constantly watch and make sure you're not going to uh, touch or bump the finished blade into the belt at all because you can, you can ruin a project very, very quickly. I'm also going to use the 2-inch contact wheel at the bottom of the flat platen uh, just to start to shape the inside of those handles. And this whole process really doesn't take all that long. I do then some sanding with an oscillating sander um, where I'll go with a, a 400, a 600, and then a 1,000. And then I've got to go uh, to hand sanding. You know, the, the, you really do get the best finish on most knives by adding a little bit of hand sanding at the end. Your fingers really just, just mold uh, to the curvature of the handles. And especially working with this paper micarta, um, you've got to uh, hand sand it down to at least a thousand before you polish it.
just get a much better result. Um, they, they say that you can actually spray this stuff with a clear, uh, you know, clear clear spray afterwards. I, I never like to spray my handles. I like to, to polish them. I'm always afraid that they would yellow. So then I went to the buffing wheel, a little bit of uh, buffing compound, uh, and then the finished product, I do actually use a little uh, automotive uh, wa car wax uh, that I'll rub on and, and polish off. To finish this uh, knife off, back to the 2x72 and I'm going to sharpen it. Um, I, again, I like to do most of my work right on the 2x72. I, I find it to be very quick. Um, I sharpen my knives with a 120 grit uh, belt. Uh, then I go 240, uh, 400, 800, um, and I work my way up to 2000. <clears throat> and I reduce the speed and I re <clears throat> reduce the amount of pressure I'm using as I'm going up on the grits. <clears throat> Excuse me. So really, I'm grinding with the 120 grit, and then I'm just polishing that micro bevel with each additional um, higher grit belt. The final step is to go to a leather stroping belt. I do not have that belt moving. I just use the uh, 2x72 as a stand, just to hold that belt in place. And you, you do end up very quickly with literally a razor sharp knife. Actually running out of hair on my arm, unfortunately. <laughs> and this is the finished build. So now we've got a full blade etching, uh, courtesy of the third dimension uh, metal etching, and they can be found on uh, their Etsy store uh, or on Instagram. You can check out his work, he's got a, a ton of great stuff. Um, and we also have segmented scales with the segment being from Mad Max Custom Knife Handles. He also makes some great products um, and, and a huge variety of different handle knife handles. Uh, if you're interested in checking out some of my other work, um, I can be found on my website, www.bergknifemaking.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up. Uh, think about subscribing to the YouTube channel. I'd love to hear some comments back, whether you liked or didn't like the video. I'd like to know. And I'd like to give you an invite to join us on our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. Thank you very much.